Alright, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this ASUS model UX510U. Alright, so to do this you're going to need a T5 screwdriver or Torx 5 and then you also need a PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver. Alright, so first thing you're going to do is remove these rubber covers. One was already missing, but basically you just get underneath here. You can use whatever you want to get underneath it. Flathead screwdriver, I just use my fingernails. Alright, so there's two Phillips PH1 or JS1 screws here. So remove those two screws. You do want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. And that's just a good practice to keep just in case because whenever you open stuff, you could end up with different screws. The way I do that, I just put them with the flat side face down on my desk. So like this in the pattern that I remove them. So here you can see like four of these screws. So I'll put those four screws and then you'll have these two screws. If you want, you can put them all in the same row. Whatever make, helps you remember it easier, all right? So there's four along the top here, and then there's those two PH or JS1 screws. These are Torx or T5 screws, okay? So we're gonna remove the two down here on the sides now. All right, and to remove this, it helps if you have a suction cup. You don't need a suction cup, but if you have one, it'll make it a little bit easier. Okay, uh, I believe the customer opened this computer before or they had someone work on it because usually they won't have this little sticker here. So if mine looks different from yours, keep in mind um, these are all customer computers. I don't know what they did to them. So if they had someone work on it and that person mixed up everything, then I won't know. So that's kind of why I usually don't show what screws I take out from where because for all I know, they could be mi they could have been mixed up by someone else already. So, all right, so once we get all those screws out, I'm gonna take the suction cup here, just stick it on the center, and we're just gonna pull it up. If it doesn't come out, it's probably because there's clips and maybe whoever worked on this broke all those clips. So I don't really see many clips except for on this upper part, so where the hinges are. So down here, there's not really any clips, it's just all metal. So this side, this front side should come up easier than the rest. So let's say you don't have a suction cup, you can get a piece of tape or two pieces of tape. So get long pieces, you stick it on like that and then have them meet in the middle like this. So, or you can just stick the two pieces of tape together and then just put the rest like down like that. And you can use that as a pull tab. All right. So there we go. So if you can't, you can also use like your fingernails or a pry tool to get underneath here. Anyways, there we go. We got that out. Okay, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is disconnect the battery if you're gonna work on anything other than just a hard drive or RAM. Um, but either way, to be safe, just because it's easy enough to get to, I'm gonna remove it. Okay, so to disconnect the battery, what you wanna do is you slide this metal piece here upwards, okay, just like this. Once you slide that up and it's no longer covering this white plastic piece, we're gonna pull this up. So I use my two fingernails and make sure you're just lifting up the white part, not the connector um, underneath on the board, okay? So just lift it up like this. And now you can see the battery is disconnected, all right? Once you disconnect the battery, what you wanna do, let me zoom out, um, open up the computer, do it slowly because there's less screws holding it, all right? And then you want to press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds. This will drain any power that's in the laptop to prevent accidental damage if you were to drop something conductive on the board. Or um, the main reason I do this is if you're going to lift or disconnect the LCD or LVDS connector. Um, that's very important if you're going to mess with that connector, which is underneath here. Then you want to press and hold that button. All right, I'm getting a call now, but I'll call them back. Okay, so anyways, here you got the, I believe this is the GPU and the CPU here. So they're both soldered to the board. All right, let me ignore this call real quick, if it lets me. Oh, it won't let me. All right, I'll just let it keep ringing. Hopefully it's still recording audio. You got the wireless card here. There's just one screw. Once you take that screw out, it'll come up slightly at an angle and you just pull it back. If it doesn't, you can lift it up. I don't want to take all this stuff out because I don't want to risk damaging anything that's already okay. Um, I do have a bunch of other videos where I replace like the wireless cards and things like that, or I show how to take them out, but 
I don't want to do it on all the computers I work on because it's basically the same idea. And you kind of want to watch as many videos for more examples. Um, all right, so you got the hard drive here. I guess I'll show, well, let me show it anyways. But um, I want to be careful here. All right, so you take that screw out and then after you take the screw, you can see you can lift this up. Once you lift it up, you can kind of wiggle it and pull it back just like that, all right? So I'm gonna put this back now. All right, there we go. Put this screw back in. So the main thing I'm going to show here is the hard drive and the RAM because most people, they're not going to have problems with the wireless card. Let me actually zoom in a little bit to show this better. Okay. All right. So the wireless card antennas, I'm only going to take one out, but you get right underneath it. Oops, sorry. It's wiggling a lot. And then you just pull straight up. You want to get as close to the connector as possible at the tail. And then you pull straight up just like that. And it pops out. All right. To put it back, you just line it up, make sure it's lined up. And then once you get that, push it straight down. Okay, the way you know it's lined up is when you have it in place, if you try and move it around, it'll stay in place. Okay, now we're gonna remove the hard drive. There's four screws holding this in place. So we're gonna take these four screws out. Again, keep them in order. Um, this model has a replaceable hard drive connector. So if you somehow break this, you can actually take these screws out and pull this connector up. I'm gonna leave it in place uh, because not many people are gonna need to do that. Oh, I'm getting another call, jeez. All right, well, once you remove the four screws, what you can do, you can lift this up slightly from the back. And then once you got it slightly lifted up, you can slide this back. Actually, you don't even need to lift it back. So while it's in here, you can actually just wiggle this and pull it out. So I'm pushing this one that way, and then I'm just using this to help wiggle it. And there you go. Now you got the hard drive out. There's a two and a half inch SATA uh, hard drive. You can replace it. I highly recommend upgrading these to um, SSDs or solid state drives. So yeah, there's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. You got the uh, speaker. Oops, I need to zoom back out so you guys can see this. Let me, oh, we'll do the RAM first, and then I'll go over the rest of the stuff. Alright, so let me finish putting these screws back in. Okay. Alright, it looks like there's also an M.2 SSD slot here. So you can add an SSD without replacing the hard drive. Um, but I don't know if this supports PCIe NVMe or if it's just SATA or if it's only um, PCIe NVMe. So for that, you'll have to look around online, see what other people used. Or you can just experiment. If you buy them on Amazon, usually they have good return policies. You can try it out. And if it doesn't work, then you can swap it back. All right, you got the keyboard backlight connector here. You got the keyboard connector here. I believe this is the touchpad connector. It actually says TP something, which is usually touchpad. Then you got this cable here that connects this other board over there, which is for the headphone jack or microphone headset. Um, SD card slot and two uh, USB ports. All right, um, again, let me zoom out actually and show the speakers. So you got the speakers connecting here and then they both plug in with the one connector up here. This kind of connector, you just grab the wings and you kind of just keep wiggling, wiggling, wiggling and it'll pop out. Again, I don't want to take out connectors that I don't need to. <clears throat> And then you also got the keyboard connector here, which these kinds of connectors, all of these, the uh, touchpad and the backlight and these, you just flip these little latches up and then you can pull the connector out. I'm going to leave that in, but that's how you would do it. All right. So then we got the RAM here. So this is how you replace the RAM. All right. Just get underneath this metal piece. Okay. So if you go underneath, you can actually lift this metal plate up. It is held down with these little clips, so you might have to kind of pry it up a little bit, but just pop this up. Okay. There's this adhesive here. I'm going to pull that aside and get that out of the way. Okay. Lift that up. And there we go. All right. So to replace the RAM, what you do is you pull these two tabs to the side. Um, there's actually some integrated RAM here that you can't replace, but there's this one stick. If your computer is having issues turning on or something, sometimes it's related to the RAM. So you want to check that. You can actually try booting it up without the RAM. And if it works without this RAM because there's integrated RAM, then that means your stick of RAM is either dirty or it's bad or it uh, failed. So if the thing is dirty, um, it won't it won't look dirty. But usually what I do is I just do that, rub my fingers over it, 
and then that will usually fix the issue. Then you just gotta reseat the stick of RAM. And another issue is sometimes people just don't put the RAM in properly. So when you put the RAM in, just make sure you insert it at an angle like this, and then make sure to kind of push it as you kind of flop it up and down a little, and then push it down all the way. There we go. Make sure that you have it pushed all the way in while it's kind of flopping up and down, and then push it down. Okay, now we're just gonna put this back on. You wanna make sure the little clips behind here also get seated. So just get all of that lined up. Okay, and then you can put this adhesive back down. So this adhesive helps hold the um, LCD LVDS connector in here. And I'm not gonna pull that out. It looks like it looks like this connector actually just pulls back this way. So this adhesive is supposed to help keep that LCD LVDS connector in place. Okay, so make sure that stays taped down. And there we go. So you also got these fans. It looks like they're replaceable as well. Um, if you want, um, I have videos on how to repair the fans if your fan's noisy or broken. But um, that, other than that, that's pretty much all I'm going to show on this video. Um, if this video helped you guys, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. What am I talking about? I forgot to put the cover back on. Let's go ahead and do that. I mean, I figure this is pretty much self-explanatory, but... Just get the thing back on, snap all the edges back in place, and then we just put all the screws back in. All right, PH1, get in these corner screws. All right, nothing special. Make sure you get all the edges clipped in. Okay. I don't know. Sometimes people ask me how to put these things back together. I figure it's self explanatory, but I guess sometimes people need to see it. So, all right. So grab this, there's a little rubber dimple on this, make sure it lines up with the dimple in here, okay? And then just put that back in place, there we go. And we'll put back the rest of the T5 or Torx 5 screws. All right, but that, other than that, that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay while I put the rest of the screws in. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching. Again, hopefully this video helps you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Share my channel with others. If they don't really care about computer repairs and things like that, I do have other random videos. I did one on like HelloFresh or riding electric unicycles and things like that. So if they're not interested in computer things, um, then feel free to share with them some of those other random videos on my channel. Um, but yeah, anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one, hopefully. Alright, bye. Whoops, I actually forgot. Uh, let me see, I'm going to take this back out. So the clips are here, yeah, you can't pull from the back. Just in case anyone was wondering, I did forget to put the battery connector back in. Make sure you push that metal clip out of the way. Let me zoom in. Okay, you just line these things up. It's hard to kind of show, but line this up. There you go, you might have to push it down a little bit like that. Get that in, push that all the way, push the metal clip back over. All right, and there we go. I was wondering why it, was, it wasn't working without the charger, so <laughs> then I remembered I took the battery out. All right, so there we go, all right. Snap everything back in place, and I already showed how to do the screws. So, thank you for watching. Again, hopefully, this video helped you guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.